Okay, so let's take a look at seven scriptures that clearly show that there is no Trinity. First, we're going to start off in John 17 and verse 1. We can see here that Jesus prayed to his Father. Was he praying to himself? And throughout the rest of John 17, we say that six, we can see that six times he said that he used the word one, describing the relationship of us, the Father, and him, saying that we were one in them, that they were one in us, that the Father was one in him, that he was one in the Father, and that they in us, in us, in them. He said it over and over again, six times, this word one. And there's going to be an, a bonus scripture coming up just after these seven to really put the icing on the cake to show you that it's impossible for there to be a trinity and why it just doesn't make sense that it even exists, why it would be... A, and you have to ask, why did they come up with this doctrine? We can clearly see that there are two persons, the Father and the Son. They are separate. They are two separate. And the scriptures define who they are. Look at the next scripture in Matthew 27 and verse 46. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Had he forsaken himself? If they're one God, why would he say this? And then in John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus said that he would ascend to the Father after his resurrection. Did he ascend to himself? In Hebrews 1 and verse 5, it tells us that Jesus was begotten by his Father. Did he beget himself? We know the scripture, how it describes it. And then in Matthew 22, 44, the Father said Jesus would sit at his right hand until his enemies were made his footstool. Was Jesus to sit at his own right hand? We can clearly see if it says that he sit in heaven, Jesus sits at the Father's right hand. Jesus does not sit where the Father is sitting. The Father is sitting at the, at the throne in his seat. Jesus sits at his right hand. The Father doesn't sit at his right hand or his left hand. Jesus sits to the right hand of the Father. It's a clear definition. Then in Matthew 24, 36, when Jesus told his disciples that no one knows the day or hour of his return, but the Father only. Right? He said no one knew. Not even, not even Jesus himself knew the, the day. Only the Father knew. If there were one God, how could he not know this? Did he just make up an excuse to make it sound like a more believable story? No, of course not. He doesn't lie. In John 14 and verse 28, Jesus said that his father was greater than he was. Does this mean that he was greater than himself? We can clearly see that there is the father and the son. He prayed to him. He was sent by him. So now let's see an extra verse. It says in John 1.14, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then finally, brothers and sisters, in John 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. So clearly he shows, yes, they, you know, considering that we're all Bible students, with all of the parables and analogies, the real true history of things happening, the symbology in prophecy, the idea that some people can't understand that there is a father and there is a son 
They are both God. They are two separate beings. And yet they are one. They are one in will. They are one in agreement. They are one in plan. They are one in every step of the way. We do not have a father that wants to go this way and a son of that father, our savior, our king, Jesus Christ, who wants to go another way. They are one. And they tell us in John 17, Jesus himself prays to the father and says that his desire is that we be one with them. This is of all the things that we can read about, of, of all the ideas and the, the perceptions that people have of what religion might be, this is our calling, eternity in the God family, to be true sons and daughters of the Holy One of Israel and of our God and Father in heaven and to be with our Lord Jesus Christ.